Hi everybody, Dave the Maverick Beekeeper. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, a big thank you to everybody who's liked, subscribed and commented on the videos that I've put up so far. So some news. As you can see from my last video I put up, um, I've decided to take the leap of faith um, and go down to Black Mountain Honey in North Wales and collect my nucleus. I was gonna do it from a local source, but unfortunately the chap I was uh, in discussion with um, might likely be falling through on his uh, his promise. That's not necessarily his fault. Communication has been sparse as far as uh, him and I have concerned. Never mind. So it's going to be uh, a six-hour journey down to uh, Black Mountain in North Wales. So it's a fair haul. So I've had to make a few plans um, in regard to safeguarding the nucleus of bees. So anyway, I'll put a video up about the journey and about all the bits and pieces, the prep and all that sort of stuff uh, as a later video uh, for you to enjoy, uh, providing it all goes well, which hopefully it will. So that's that part. The second bit, I'm going to put up another video uh, in about the next two or three weeks and it's going to be on a very controversial subject and it is brood diseases and treatment, organic, non-organic. So there you go. But I'm calling on you guys to help me. Now, there'll be a lot of people out there that experience both sides of the fence. So I need information. I need information so that I can put a balanced view across as far as the video is concerned. I have my own views, but I'll keep them to myself for now. So there's two ways you can do it. First of all, in the comments below, or if you've got quite a, a lot of information to impart, then on my uh, Gmail, which will be the Maverick Beekeeper at gmail.com. So please, 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 I'm, I'm asking this so that I can get that information. I can get my head into books, but I prefer to get it from people out on the coalface, people that are doing it. Uh, and then it gives me uh, an accurate picture of what's going on out there. So please, please, thank you. Right, moving on, we'll go on to the second part of uh, ancient Egyptian beekeeping. This is part two. I'm gonna keep that to two parts because to go any further into that subject, you start to get bogged down um, and I don't wanna bore you to death. So without further ado, we'll go on to the next part of ancient Egyptian beekeeping and please enjoy. Comments below if you find it interesting and I will speak to you very soon. Thank you. We're now gonna discuss New Kingdom beekeeping. Non-royal tombs dating back to the New Kingdom contain scenes reflecting the importance of peacekeeping that had flourished during this era. Among these, TT 73 of Amanhotep, chief steward of Hatshep Sut. The tomb includes damaged beekeeping scenes that contained a number of pipe-like hives with tapered ends similar to those of the Old Kingdom. Kneeling before them are two beekeepers, depicted on both registers and is assumed that honey is being collected from these primitive hives. It is also noted that one individual is holding a jar of incense as an offering to the bees, but by pure coincidence it had a calming effect. A primitive smoker, if you like, had been discovered and continued to be a regular practice from that point. The tomb TT100 of Rek Mira illustrates two significant scenes. He appears to be receiving taxes in the form of valuable goods and of course honey. It is known to be one of the most complete beekeeping scenes discovered from the ancient kingdom, depicting the owner supervising collection of provisions and of course honey. This scene shows on the far right horizontal beehives with rounded ends resting on a platform of clay. I guess the first primitive hive stands. Just in front of it, is noted that two beekeepers are collecting the valuable white honey and using the discovered new smoking technique and placing the valuable commodity into bowls. The ancient Egyptians realized that honey under certain conditions was vulnerable to heat and moisture, spoiling it very quickly. So its preservation was important and therefore conditions within the tomb were preferable. Containers varied in size and shape which the honey was stored and notably vases that were spherical in shape were made to store precious commodities such as oil and honey substances and were sealed with beeswax which were of the highest quality. As the scene illustrates preparation of other foodstuffs more notable 
was the process of using flour and honey to bake and produce honey loaves and add to the temple provisions. From the scenes, it was understood by experts that the ancient Egyptians were conversant with the types of honey that was produced. The white honey, or white milk, from the delta was considered the premium, as it was reserved only for royalty and tomb provisioning, and extracted only by the best and most competent beekeepers. The second type of honey gathered was wild or red honey, from feral colonies in the upper regions brought back by hunting parties and expeditions. This was utilised according to its grade and considered light liquid honey and was of an inferior quality and extracted by pressure and water being used in the extraction process. As sugar was not available at the time, this honey was used to make cakes to suit the sweeter tooth. Offerings were commonplace but did not appear in the rituals or offerings list until the Middle Kingdom and was depicted in the tomb TT343 of Benya and from the registers shown, depicted by diamond shaped bowls, and as you can see, among them is a bearer carrying the sealed diamond shaped jars. The scenes were commonplace, and the use of diamond shaped containers is illustrated in the tomb TT69 of Menya, TT52 of Nakt, and finally TT56 of Userat. However, this was not always commonplace to receive sealed containers. The tomb TT101 of Januro depicts a bearer offering honeycomb in an open basin. This is indicated by two bees on the comb itself. A more detailed picture was located within tomb TT51 of Userat, where he appears making offerings to the god Osiris. Titles were important within the community of beekeepers and to be bestowed with a recognition and title and being immortalized on temple walls was the ultimate. The first being Smenthu as a head of beekeepers of his lord Min and Isis. Late period. Information from late period beekeeping came from the tombs of Sete and the tomb TT279 of Pabasa and TT414 of Angkor. These pictures depicted beekeepers practicing their art and the presence of bees outside the hive containers is a clear depiction of what we all know as a swarm. The reliefs have deteriorated over time with little of the scene still remaining. Among all insects, the honey bee was regarded as a favoured creature and reflected its importance and the sign of true legitimacy and connected with true royal ideology. Its significance indicated to the Egyptians is found throughout antiquities, found including on cartouches and of course the connection to the Egyptian gods. Ancient Egyptians knew the significance and its productivity as the sole producer for the precious honey commodity and endured as late as the Roman era. The titles of beekeepers and when elevated to head of beekeepers of his lord is of great entitlement. Even religious leaders sought after positions due to the association with the gods Min and Amun. The depictions of beekeepers throughout the Egyptian kingdoms were of great source of information and the practices they employed to master the unpredictable insects and with, I might say, with great success. Sometimes we lose focus and it is always a value to reflect what these first pioneers of apiculture offer to the modern practices today. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed the second part of ancient beekeeping in Egypt. Um, what I will do is uh, I will keep that to just two parts so the part you've just seen be is the last part of that section uh, to go on more in detail would be uh, become quite tedious so I've kept it nice and simple and uh, thanks for watching if you like um, then subscribe comments below as usual and I will always see you on the flip side of the brew frame thank you very much and cheerio